Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to this 7.30am Sunday meditation with me. Slightly later today because um, I had a super early start yesterday <laughs> and I needed a little bit of a, of a lie-in this morning. So I hope you're all feeling rested and we, it's a beautiful new day again. And it's kind of cold. I think you know we're we're moving into autumn, and um, who's here? I can see there's there's two or three of you. It sort of goes in and out of numbers. Um, do you want to say hi, whoever's here? Just put a comment in in the um, comments box below. So, namaste. I think, um, oh hi Caroline, morning. <laughs> there are people who get up as early as me on Sunday. <laughs> so this morning I, um, I decided to involve my Osho Buddha cards. I was going to do a little reading yesterday, but I didn't get myself organised and I didn't want to leave the video and go upstairs. So um, I'm going to pick a card for all of us this morning. I, I might pick a couple actually. It's been a while since I did this. Um, these are really beautiful cards. They're quite rare, aren't they? Um, they used to belong to my dad, who was always bumping into to up and coming people and um, products and, and all sorts of amazing things. He was really in with the, the spiritual crowd, we could say. <laughs> These are an Osho deck, so they're not the actual Osho tarot cards, they're Osho Buddha cards. They're very beautiful. So I'm going to pick one this morning and we'll see. This is for all of us. So, what's this one? If you are happy, at the expense of another man's happiness, you are forever bound. So this is really about finding our inner, our inner happiness and not being reliant on anything, either those around us or anything around us. Anyone or anything. Whatsoever you possess in this world, you possess at somebody else's expense at the cost of somebody else's pleasure. There is no other way. If you really want not to be inimical to anybody in the world, you have to drop the whole idea of possessiveness. Use whatever so happens to be with you in the moment. But don't be possessive. Don't try to claim that it is yours. Nothing is yours. All belongs to existence. We come with empty hands, we will go with empty hands. So what is the point of claiming so much in the meantime? If anybody wants to ask me anything about that, I'm happy to open up a space of conversation. In fact, I would love it if, if you would um, find questions to ask me. I very much enjoy discussion on these things. I'm going to pick a couple more, I think, this morning for us all. And if any of you feel that these are really relevant to your life right now, which I'm sure they are, which is probably why I'm picking them, <laughs> just let me know. So, this one. The way is not in the sky, the way is in the heart. 
sprinkles. Don't look upward. When you pray, you look upward. If there is a God there, Buddha says, as if there is a God there, Buddha says, look inward because God is there. Absolutely. God is within all of us and everywhere. But yes, it's a misnomer to be looking up at anything, really, or, or up to anyone. All gurus, all masters are a reflection of our own divinity. So if we can not get caught up in chasing someone, seeing them as anything more than we are, this is a good start. So third one. They're so beautiful, I love these. Look within. The rising and the falling. What happens? How sweet to be free. The rising and the falling of your breath, that is the way of looking within. Many have said, look within. Socrates said, look within, know thyself. But nobody has given the exact method. Buddha gives you the exact method. The rising and the falling of the breath. It is through the breath that you are bridged. Breath is the bridge between your soul and your body. Or as I like to say, breath is the bridge between your soul and God. The body and God. If you can watch your breath rising and falling, slowly, slowly, you will be able to see the body as separate from yourself. And also the breath as separate from yourself. Because the watcher cannot be watched, the observer cannot be the observed. Suddenly one day you will realise that you are the witness of it all. The witness is certainly transcendental to all that it witnesses. In that very moment freedom has happened to you. Thank you EJ, much love to you. And love to you, Caroline. Who else is here? I can see there's a few more of you. Come on, show, you, show yourselves. <laughs> right. Shall I pick one more? What do you think? Yeah, I'm feeling to. We'll have this one. It is sweet to live arduously and to master yourself. Life is basically insecure. Only death is secure. Ah, oh, yes. This is, yes, I really feel this one. Life insurance is a contradiction in terms, of course. There can only be death insurance. Life is an adventure, unpredictable, Hence, one has to live it arduously. Life is dangerous. Only death is safe. So people who want to live safely die before their death. And the people who want to live without danger don't live at all. Life means danger. Life means risk. Life means going away from the known to the unknown. From one peak to another peak. Always climbing peaks. We have not been able to climb before, always moving into the uncharted sea with no maps and no guidelines. Only when you live ecstatically and only when you know what life is. Through living, through living dangerously, one becomes integrated. Through living a life of insecurity, one passes through fire and becomes pure gold. The only way to become a master of oneself is to go into the unknown, unafraid, or in spite of all the fears. Buddha invites you to live an arduous life. Yes, there is no security in life. There are no guarantees 
The only guarantee is or death. Hmm. Morning to me. Hi. Oh, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to read this bit again. It's very powerful. Let it really sink in. Life is basically insecure. Only death is secure. Life insurance is a contradiction in terms. There can only be death insurance. Life is an adventure, unpredictable. Hence one has to live it arduously. Life is dangerous. Only death is safe. So the people who want to live safely die before their death, and the people who want to live without any danger don't live at all. Life means danger. Life means risk. Life means going away from the known to the unknown, from one peak to another peak, always climbing peaks which we have not climbed before, always moving into uncharted territory, uncharted sea, sorry, with no maps and no guidelines. Only when you live ecstatically, and only, and only then, you know what life is. Through living dangerously, one becomes integrated. Through living a life of insecurity, one passes through fire and becomes pure gold. The only way to become a master of oneself is to go into the unknown, unafraid or in spite of all fears. Buddha invites you to an arduous life. What is here is, is everything, is it, is life. To be fully with what's happening is really to be living life. To be saying that things should be different or should be this, should be that, could be this, could be that. is misleading because life is unfolding perfectly through grace in every single moment. Sometimes it might not feel like that, sometimes it might not look like that. But the intelligence that runs through everything is way beyond our mind's idea of, of what's possible. All life is working together for each one of us. We're like this system. It's like the body system like cells in the body all working together, all working individually for a much higher and greater purpose. No, there are no guarantees. There's no guarantees for tomorrow. And what's past is, is past. It's no longer relevant. past is gone. What's here is all there is. And to try and find any guarantee in anything, any permanency in anything, is not possible. With relationships we want to think, or we think rather, we don't necessarily want to, but we think that we we're with somebody so they will they will stay with us. They will always be around. That there's some permanency in that choice that you make with someone. Or with family or with friends, any relationship. But everybody is free. Nobody is bound to anybody by anything. All those ideas are just ideas from society. ideas and beliefs that keep us bound, that keep us in some kind of constructed idea of, of what life should be or what life is supposed to be. 
But life is free. Life is freedom. You are freedom. You have the choice to do, be, create whatever you want to create. We only get in our own way. No one else is getting in our way about anything. So set yourselves free. You have the power to do that. You know the truth. Deep within your being, you are fully aware of who and what you are. You have never been anything else. You never could be anything else. Sometimes it might look like something else is happening. But that's not the truth. And everybody knows deep down. Everybody is having these experiences, these, these understandings, these small but perfect, miraculous realisations. But who's talking about it? Who talks about it? Who is open enough to say, this is happening to me? We're all having so many different types of experiences here. And we're all growing. We're all growing together as well as individually. And then, yes, there are no guarantees about anything in life. And be okay with that, that's the mystery. To think that we know the outcome of anything is, um, is, the, is the insanity, really, that a lot of the world is based on. The idea of time. Time's a man-made concept. Time doesn't exist. It's only ever now and it's only and you're only ever here. <laughs> How could you be anywhere else, really? You're always here, it's always now. And when the body drops, it's always here and it's always now. And yes, this is very much beyond the mind's idea of this body, this, this construct that we're all living in, you know. This matrix of illusion, if you like. I'm going to pick another one of these cards and share them with you because they're so beautiful and I haven't looked at them for a while. In all things, be a master of what you do and what you say and think. In all things be a master of what you do, what you say and what you think. Be free. Man can be divided into four parts. The outermost circumference consists of action, what you do. The second layer, a little deeper than your action, consists of your saying, what you say. A little deeper, the third layer, consists of your thinking, what you are constantly thinking. And the fourth is not a layer, the fourth is your reality, your being, that is your centre, centre of the cyclone. Your centre, your being, is surrounded by three concentric circles, thinking, saying, doing. Are you aware of what you are doing? Are you doing it consciously or just because others are doing it? 
Are you an imitator, just following the crowd like a sheep? Be a man, be a woman, don't be a sheep. Don't follow the crowd, the individual. Only then can you become a master. Only individuals can be masters. Set yourself free. Break from the moulds. Break from the ideas and concepts of what you should or shouldn't be doing or who you should or shouldn't be or looking at anybody else like they have something that you don't have or that you should be like them. Forget that word should. You are as you are, you're unique and you're here to be you, true you, fullest you you can be. Step out, be courageous, be brave. What do you want to create? We have a limited time here, in a sense, in this body, anyway. What's your contribution going to be? What's important to you in life? How are you willing to be the change? How are you willing to be the change that you want to see, as Gandhi said? How can you truly step into your power? How can you truly step into your freedom? How can you walk in integrity? How can you love yourself more? Your awakening is your greatest gift to humanity, to yourself. Let that be your priority. I'll have one more from here, and I'll put them away. <laughs> if you cannot quieten yourself, what will you ever learn? How will you become free? All learning happens through meditation. It does not happen through study. That is accumulation of information. It is not learning. Always be alert about borrowed knowledge. However so precious it appears, it is false persuado. For you. It is true for Buddha, true for Jesus, true for Krishna, but not for you. Buddha had scriptures available. He could have learned the Gita so absolutely that he would have been able to repeat it just from memory, but then he would have missed Buddhahood. In Jesus, says time, the Old Testament was available. But Jesus tried to find out the truth for himself. Truth. This is something very essential to understanding. Truth has to be found by oneself. It is only by experiencing truth on, on your own that freedom happens. Freedom is the fragrance of the experience of truth. 
I'm going to read this one again. All learning happens through meditation. Yes, it sure does. It does not happen through study. This is a is accumulation of information. It is not learning. Always be alert about borrowed knowledge. Howsoever precious it appears, it is false persuado for you. It is true for Buddha, true for Jesus, true for Krishna, but not for you. Buddha had scriptures available. He could have learned the Gita so absolutely that he would have been able to repeat it just from memory. But then he would have missed Buddhahood. In Jesus' time, the Old Testament was available, but Jesus tried to find out the truth for himself. This is something very essential to understand. Truth has to be found by oneself. It is only by experiencing truth on your own that freedom happens. Freedom is the fragrance of the experience of truth. Put all your energies, put all your intention into finding the truth for yourself. And don't seek an idea of truth. Seek truth from your inner being. Turn inwards where you already know all there is to know. You have to become empty in order to become full. Empty yourself of all the knowledge. Empty yourself of everything you think you know about life. About this. Become a, an empty chalice. Ready, receptive, expectant. Waiting to be filled up. with what life has to offer. With the diamonds in your soul. And don't take my word for it. I'm just here as a signpost. I can only point you, but you have to be the one that looks. It's like the finger pointing to the moon. It's all right here. All you have to do is ask and be sincere in your asking. And be ready to surrender. You don't even have to know what that means. Truth is a choice. Be ready to give it all up in order to know yourself. And let it all crumble away. Let all ideas about what you think this is crumble away. Because they will have no holding. The walls we built around ourselves to protect ourselves from life, from love, must come down in order to know truth. There's no protection needed in the hands of grace. 
When you're ready, you will fall into the arms of grace. And there'll be nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and there'll be nothing you want to do about it either. It will happen. It is happening. Life is happening. Life is unfolding. Grace is happening. You might not see it, but it is. And when you're ready, you will see. And you will be having your own experience. of that grace does anybody have any questions about this morning's little discussion so far Please feel free to put a comment below. I'd like to encourage you all to do that, really. Let's take some silence now. Join me. Closing your eyes. Watching your breath. Relaxed and easy, softening. Open and receptive.
just allowing whatever's happening in the body, just allowing whatever's happening in the mind. Allowing all sensations, all feelings. Being the space for all of it. With each breath, allowing yourself to move a little deeper into this space. In the light of love, in the light of the heart, everything is transformed. Transmuted. Whatever we bring the light of love to, our loving attention to, is instantly transformed. Forgiveness is bringing love to a situation or a person yourself. And it has the power to transform.
love is like a candle. Oops. <laughs> it was a bit hot. Sorry about that. Oh, I think I'm going to blow it out. It spreads. Love is like the flame of a candle. And you are that flame. And by burning brightly and shining your love into the world, you can light the candles, you can light the flame in others. Much love, everybody. I think I've burnt my thumb <laughs> on the flame. <sighs> many, many blessings. Have a beautiful day. You are the light. My thumb will be okay, don't worry. It's, it's okay. It just hurts a little bit, but it, it's fine. It's all worth it. Maybe that was a live demonstration of, <laughs> of how the flame can um, spread. <laughs> Namaste.